welcome to the pearson test of english this is the listening section the question in this particular session is multiple choice choose single answer the test format is as follows you will be given two to three tasks each question consists of options in this case you will be given three to four options the scoring is basically correct incorrect meaning you will get one mark for a correct response and zero for incorrect response the recording that you hear usually lasts for 30 to 60 seconds only one option is correct so you have to select only one correct option the skill assessed here is only listening the tasks are not timed individually in this section meaning you can spend as much as time as you want but you are suggested not to spend more than 1.5 minutes per question now here is a sample of the question as it appears in the test you can see the instruction given at the beginning it says listen to the recording and answer the multiple choice question by selecting the correct response only one response is correct so your question is here this is basically the context within which these options are given this is your audio status box here you can see how much time it is playing for while listening to this you have to match these options and see which one fits best into the conversation or the audio recording now let us have a look at what the task is all about you will have to listen to a recording of a passage on the screen or the page there will be a question regarding the passage and a list of possible answers you have to select the answer which is correctly related to the passage you have listened to there will be only one correct answer so bear this in mind the purpose of the task is to test your ability to identify correct information based on what you comprehend through listening now let us have a look at the strategies for listening multiple choice single answer you must always begin by reading the questions first as this will give you an idea of the context at the same time if you familiarize yourself with the ideas and words there while listening to the audio you might be able to match them up faster when doing so what you can do is keep your erasable notebook booklet with you just in case you want to make notes of the key ideas especially regarding the topic and information mentioned by the speaker while doing so correlate or trace the development of the speaker's ideas this basically means try and identify the beginning ideas which are usually mentioned in the first or second sentence from there you can see what are the other connecting ideas the speaker is mentioning and any other details or inferences that the speaker is making try to understand the general flow of ideas like what is said at the beginning what is said at the middle and how it is concluded while doing so match those ideas with the options given only mark the option that you are absolutely sure about another good method to do this task effectively or this item effectively is to eliminate the incorrect options out of the three or four options given there will be at least two which do not make sense at all so do not waste your time looking at them pick up cues from the text while listening to the audio you will find certain words or phrases that match the audio or the recording use them as your cues click on the option to deselect and click on the right option now here is your practice question 1 you will listen to the recording and you have to answer the multiple choice question by selecting the correct response remember it is a single answer question so only one response is correct so you will now hear a recording and based on that you can take down whichever is your correct answer and later on you can cross check with the answers given to you here is the recording practice test 1 page 44 section 2 multiple choice choose single answer listen to the recording 
and answer the multiple choice question by selecting the correct response. Only one response is correct. Recording A. I suppose the reason I got into geology was, well, as a kid I was fascinated by fossils. The fact that they went back countless years, long before there were any people on the planet. That was exciting, and、um, they were beautiful too. And one thing led to another. What fascinates me? Let me give you an example. Suppose we dredge up from the sea floor some silt washed down by a river, and、um, suppose that for political or other reasons we can't enter the country through which that river runs. Well, by careful study of the particles of that silt, we can form a pretty accurate picture of the nature of that country. Not just the rocks, I mean, but the vegetation and animal life of the area. I sometimes think what we do is a bit like、um, Sherlock Holmes. You know, he takes a look at a man's shoes and can tell you which field in which county in England he's been in and when. That sort of detective aspect of the work is always interesting and exciting. Okay, we do spend time in the lab and at the computer, but we do get out and about and go to interesting places for field work. Practice question two. Once again, you will listen to a recording, and you have to select only one correct response. Here is the recording. Recording B. What troubles me when I'm asked the question, "Can creative writing be taught?" Usually asked in a skeptical tone of voice. Is not that I can't find an answer, but trying to figure out why I'm being asked. What do they want me to say? No, of course it can't. I just like taking people for a ride. I'm a con artist. Obviously, you can't teach someone to have a talent for storytelling or a love of language or how to write extremely well. But there are important lessons to be gotten across that will improve their writing. And at the very least, make it publishable. For me, the best starting point is the habit of close reading, really close, and responding to the language. Forget about grand themes and ethical content, whatever, for the moment, and ask if the author writes badly or well. So, writing can be taught through reading, through literature. Then I'd say, when it comes to your own writing. That you need to learn how to edit, to know when to say, "You don't need that word or that sentence," and that whole paragraph can go. It's one of the most important lessons a writing class can teach. As for producing a Tolstoy or a Dickens, well, people like that tend to get there by their own route. Now, here are some common problems associated with this type of question. The first one is accent. People often find it difficult to follow the accent, so you must practice listening to accents. The next one is lack of vocabulary knowledge. It is not until the time that people take these kind of tests, especially the PTE test, that candidates often realize that they cannot comprehend or understand maybe half or more than half of the words said by the speakers. And that is due to a severe lack of vocabulary and lack of reading. The third problem that candidates may possibly face is pronunciation and the inability to understand the pronunciation of the speaker. Most of the speakers in the audios are native speakers of English, so following that might become a little difficult. Now, here are some tips to do this type of question appropriately and correctly. The first tip is what is the main idea? Now, as mentioned earlier, you have to listen to an audio recording and then you have to associate those ideas with the options given. This often becomes confusing because there might be bits of information in possibly most of the options or all of the options. So the key here is to identify what the main idea is, and you can do that. By immediately making note in the first two, one or two sentences, which are basically your introductory sentences, about the main idea. The main idea is always mentioned at the beginning, so look for that. For example, maybe the sentence begins with "World War," and the following sentences would be "World War affected many countries all over the world. Some of them were." Britain, 
the US Germany Italy so the main idea here is world war the next idea is the country or the are uh, the countries that are mentioned so whenever you're making a note first and foremost make a note of this now the second tip is practicing your vowel sounds this will enable you to understand how vowel sounds are used in different accents for example let's take the word day d a y day now in british and american accents or any other english accents day is pronounced the way i am pronouncing it right now day but if you listen to the australian accent the a gets a little stretched so they probably pronounce it as day today or monday so you need to familiarize yourselves so that you don't get confused in this case day almost sounded like day so this will really really help if you listen to them repeatedly if you listen to this similar pattern or similar sounding words repeatedly and familiarize yourself the third point that i would like to emphasize upon is synonyms learn plenty of synonyms as they will widen your vocabulary range and when a person is speaking or when you hear somebody in the recording you will be able to understand and comprehend most of what they say finally we come to the next bit which is vocabulary vocabulary is extremely important again not just synonyms i am referring to antonyms i am referring to homophones i am referring to words used in different contexts the more you learn the more you will understand so get into the habit of reading or practicing at least 5 to 10 words every day practice listening to various accents even when you're listening to movies or watching movies and you're listening to different accents people generally tend to put subtitles on and watch movies sometimes you do it out of habit sometimes you do it because you actually don't get what they're saying so a good practice would be to watch the first 5 or 10 minutes of a movie without subtitles and see how much you can comprehend then go back put the subtitles on and watch it again and see how many words you were able to understand that way you will also get an idea about your own pronunciation as well as your fluency and finally the best thing about the listening test that you can do is listen understand and act that is the end of this explanation thank you